For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker. Penn State was founded in 1855, and one of the great things about something that's been around for a while is that over time, traditions occur. Whether it's a certain place to eat, study, or an activity to participate in, all these things give places and events a certain character. For many at Penn State, it's Beaver Stadium on a brisk fall afternoon of course with Old State coming out on top. Or maybe it's perched on the neck of the Nittany Lion statue, clad in a commencement robe, while mom and dad snap some memories for posterity. But for many, one of the most solid traditions is visiting a small annexed outbuilding at Borland Lab. The building is the creamery, and never has such a small room garnered so much popularity among Penn Staters. I don't know really how it started, but let's just put it this way. Over the years, it just continued and continued to grow as a tradition. And one of the main reasons, I guess, would say, is that everybody that went to Penn State and uh, kind of always made it as a landmark where let's go to the creamery or meet at the creamery. And it was a central location. And then, of course, because it was the creamery, there was ice cream. And you know, the ice cream grew and grew is a, is a great flavor, a great taste, you know, a, a great food to have on campus. And you know, what better place to get ice cream than to, you know, your old alma mater and, and to come during football games and holidays and so forth. <laughs> well, the creamery uh, was established in the, in the mid to late 1800s, basically uh, started out in, in, in barn stables. Uh, throughout the years, it's moved uh, four times. This is the fifth time to the new building. It's uh, it recently at the Borland Lab um, since um, in the 30s, 1930s. Uh, and the renovations took place in 1961. We added what you currently see behind us. One tradition that creamery patrons are used to, but not too fond of, is the long line that seems to be there every football and graduation weekend, proving that every tradition isn't always welcomed. The simple truth is that the creamery has outgrown its home. Interior and covered exterior seating is quickly outstripped during special weekends. Even the number of flavors the creamery can serve is affected by the space available. Solution? A new food science building with a new creamery. The new facility uh, is part of the new food science building. The food science building uh, came in around $47.5 million. Uh, it's currently under construction. We're looking at moving into the store sometime in mid-June. Our current store, as you see behind me, is 1,400 square foot. The new store will be 3,700 square foot, so two and a half times. Uh, we offer 21 flavors at any time dipping here. Uh, we'll be able to dip 30 different flavors of ice cream cones. And uh, there'll be a lot more seating. Uh, as you can see, there's not much seating inside. Uh, that's why there are a lot of lines. Uh, at the new facility, we'll have about 80 seats, 80 uh, seats inside and 80 seats under the canopy, and also picnic tables outside. So it, it'll accommodate, the, the, especially during football season. What we have here is the new creamery store. And what we have in the new creamery store, uh, these six doors right here will be the coolers in between the two sets of six doors will be the cold uh, beverage area. And of course, on the other side, those six doors will be the freezer area. In between here, uh, you have what we call the hot beverage area, the hot bar area. This will consist of coffee, cappuccino machines, or creamer dispenser machines. On the other side, we'll have donuts, tasty cakes, things that snacks, things like that that go along with the pop. You come around here to the front. We have our checkout area. In this first area right here will be uh, four or five registers. Behind is our checkout area. Which basically, we'll be prepping everything, uh, getting everything ready as far as whatever customers would buy in ice cream, uh, customers would buy in the normal foods that we have. On this particular side is our dipping area. There will be three dipping cabinets. Each dipping cabinet will have uh, 10 flavors with it, so we'll have a total of 
um, 30 different flavors. Over here you'll see this is an island that's basically going to be our bagel and our fruit island. Uh, we'll have microwaves, toaster ovens, things of that nature to prep everything uh, besides ice cream. And finally over in this area, this is where uh, our seating area is going to be. Right now we have all the equipment here, but uh, eventually this will seat close to 80 people. We have the outside of the new creamery now. Around the front is the main entrance, coming around to this area. Underneath the canopy will be seating area. There will probably be enough seats, tables, and chairs for another 60 people. Out here, this is what's called, uh, I guess, the Creamery Plaza, the Creamery uh, Promenade. Uh, as you can see, there are uh, wall seat walls, which will, will have the availability not only people to sit on the walls and have conversation, but also in between there will also be picnic benches and so forth. No matter what the changes may bring to the new Creamery, one thing will remain the same, that special creamery ice cream. I think the uniqueness is it's University Creamery ice cream. You know, I mean, uh, that's, that's the name, first of all. Uh, you know, first and foremost, you know, that's the people that, it's things that people talk about on, on campus, University Creamery. Um, the other reason, it, it, it does have very high butterfat content as, you know, ice cream is con considered a premium ice cream. Um, we also get all of our ingredients are natural ingredients. You know, we, we don't use a, as far as peach flavoring, we use peaches. So when we do, do go get fruits and so forth, we do try to get the best fruits that are out there. For In Motion, I'm Kurt Parker.